Hello and welcome back to Phone a Friend News with the Ambassadors of Gaming. I am one of your two hosts, Ambassador Chris. And I'm Ambassador Michael. And if you are listening to me on SoundCloud at the moment, it's probably for the better. Because my voice sounds a lot nicer than my face looks. <laughs> my girlfriend would argue that, but... Yeah. yeah. We'll go ahead and leave that one alone. <laughs> anyway... We have news about stuff, as we normally do. Once do. a week, sorry, sorry about the delay. The delay was my own fault. Got a little bombarded with schoolwork, so we needed to push it back another day. Letting them down, man. You're letting the people down. I was going to say, you can't just shake your head. We got listeners on SoundCloud now. You have to use your words. Yeah, I know. You can't yeah, just... Uh... Now I also have to be the dick that goes, <clears throat> we have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash ambassadors of gaming, because I can't just put up the title... And be like, shameless promotion. Uh, if my voice is soothing, donate. <laughs> I will find you. And uh, I will kill you. My real, name is Optimus Prime. Real quick, uh, the Patreon we do we have set up... We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm trying to have a serious no, moment. No, I'm sorry. I'm like so, Optimus Prime. The Patreon we have set up is just generalized support. We do want to do more stuff, but again, we can only do so much as we can working full time and going to school full time. So, you know, we're on Patreon as a sort of a means of way to go. You know, we're doing this for free. We're going to keep doing this for free. It will always be free. Uh, but we want to expand to do more stuff. But to do that, we need, you know, money to circumvent, you know, exactly. taking time off of work to do that kind of stuff. Uh, the so. only reason that I got a hold of the new Galaxy 3DS for the unboxing that I had was I turned in my old one and I had GameStop points enough to get it to me for a really cheap price. That was the only reason I was able to afford it. <clears throat> we um, are college students who are poor, but enough of that, you don't care. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> we're sorry for that. Well, we're going to go ahead and get on with the news, which there, it is going to be a shorter episode just because uh, a lot of the stuff isn't really all that detailed just little no. tidbits of well things. that and tgs is happening tomorrow it starts tomorrow so granted tgs isn't a lot of what we get here um but it's still interesting to, it's still interesting well like sony did their um like their pre tokyo game show um earlier in the week and some of those announcements we'll talk about later but we'll see what happens uh so the first things first that Lindsay Lohan lawsuit she had with uh, Rockstar because she was the trying one to get a that cash was grab. Ages ago. It was the one where she was suing over the model on the front of GTA 5, right? Yeah. Well, the model and the loading screen and the. Yeah, she's in the promotional material. She's like holding stuff. an iPhone or what yeah. looks like an iPhone, if I remember correctly. Lindsay Lohan was saying, hey, that's me. Yeah. And her ca- the, the character in that promotion material is in the game, but she doesn't really resemble her likeness she doesn't have you know similar things happen to her that happened to Lindsay Lohan anyway so they went to court over it and this was before GTA 5 was released I think or around the time it was released and in that time frame GTA sold millions of millions of copies and remastered the game for PS4 and Xbox One and sold millions and millions of more copies (laughs) so they're fine that's San Andreas right no five Oh, okay. San Andreas is the one that came out in, like, when we were in fourth grade. Or, like, Dude, San Andreas the... is so fun. San Andreas is old as fuck now. Um, but, so Rockstar showed up to court. They were like, look, this is the model we used. And they looked at it, and they're like, well, yeah, I mean, it resembles her, but so does every other blonde girl in a bikini. So, you know, what, you know. Plus, you're it was, pro- they're protected it was by very... satire laws. And uh, parody laws too. So you're even if to they do were so much, even if even if they extent. were doing it, it was very clear that it was a cash grab. That it was a cash grab. It was going nowhere. Yes. Uh, so, but that's they got sued done. by somebody else too. Another reality TV star. Um, I forget her name because it wasn't relevant. But and I think her case got thrown out too. So good on you, rock star. Um, so the next two pieces here are PlayStation VR. Um, and this is a little confusing, so I'll try to explain it the best I can. Sony announced yeah, uh, Anywhere VR. This is awful. Anywhere VR. VR. Anywhere VR, awful. from what I understand, is an application 
that works on PlayStation VR that emulates your phone in the foreground with a background behind it. It does not take up the whole screen like Gear VR. You don't like put your phone in there or whatever. It like shows it like this and then it just has a backdrop behind it. I don't know why you would want to do that. And yeah. the first comment I saw when I scrolled through this was, well, how do you know where you're touching on your phone if you can't see your phone? And I'm like, you prove a solid is, point, good sir. That is a very valid point. It, 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 this could this whole thing could be a misunderstanding. It's um <clears throat> because it's very broad. It it was announced at TGS too, so like the pre TGS show, so like you know we got to take it with a little bit of grain of salt as to what what's what. Plus, um, I believe honestly that this what this is for is so that people in Japan can use the VR headset to play their mobile games because mobile yeah. gaming there is infinitely more popular than it is here. And think about every person you know who has a smartphone that plays games on it. And that's, it's even more popular in Japan. So I assume that's what this is for. Um, it's, I mean, it's kind of cool. It'd be different if it was like, I'm playing a game on PSVR and then I could just have like my phone pop up like on the side or something like that. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, I have yeah, a text, yeah, yeah. and then I could just take the headset off. You know what I mean? That would be awesome. But then again, that kind of defeats the point of having the VR headset on to be immersed in it anyways. You know what I mean? Right. So, but we'll get more clarification about that. It's also being made by Sony's music division. Like. Why? I don't, I don't, Sony's huge. They got like 18 different Tell divisions. Tell me why. I don't know. Um, hey, but, uh, now. This no. is another piece of PSVR news. Uh, they have announced the demo disc that comes with it. Um, North America is getting 18 games, so there are 18 demos, and then Europe is getting eight. Now I don't know which of these 18 games Europe is getting. I'm sure you could find it if you looked at Eurogamer or you know something like that. Um, but I'm gonna run through this list real quick. Excuse me. Um, Element. Battlezone, Drive Club VR, Eve Valkyrie, Nog, Harmonix, Music VR, Headmaster, Here They Lie, Job Simulator, PlayStation VR Worlds, Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, Kitchen Teaser, Res Infinite, Riggs Mechanized Combat League, Thumper, Tumble VR, Until Dawn Rush of Blood, Wayward Sky, and Within. Now, I don't know all of those games. I know a few of them. Um, is Job Simulator going to be the same one for HTC Vive, or is it a yes. totally... It is. Yeah, I that believe one is hilarious. It is the exact same game, yes. Yeah, it is pretty funny. It's pretty that stupid, is... but it's pretty funny. It's so funny. It's so it's funny. Kind of, it reminds me of Goat Simulator in like how stupid it is. You know what I mean? Um, I am excited to play re- the Resident Evil 7 teaser in VR. That sounds fucking awesome. Because uh, Kitchen, I guess Kitchen was a VR demo before Resident Evil 7 got announced. So then they announced Resident Evil 7 they were like this is from Kitchen and then now they're releasing that as like a public thing so that's cool Uh, the reason I specifically talked about that one is because the next piece of news is about Resident Evil 7 Um, they have said no good news well sad news and good news I guess yeah I was gonna say that's sad news Um, Resident Evil 7 will not include microtransactions uh, it will unfortunately have pre-order bonuses from retailers because of course it will um and then the $80 deluxe edition of Resident Evil 7 includes two additional pieces of content which are four side missions and then I believe a prequel to 7 it uh, the second piece is a bigger piece of story but it's like side information it ties into 7 but it's not crucial to the story arc I guess I don't know they they said uh, the way it was worded was really weird but now I'm like, damn it, I have to buy the $80 edition. You fuckers got me. Good job. Right, so. right. Oh, my goodness. Puberty oh my strikes goodness. again. <sighs> Puberty strikes again, like a lightning <laughs> bolt. Um, I forgot to add one thing on here. This but is this... why no one will support us on Patreon, because I got a voice like all that. All your fault. It's um, all my fault. So here's the flash news this is flash news again is just quick bullet point news it's not a lot of stuff to discuss it's just there um gotta go fast meow the last guardian the uh delay of forever jokingly aside with final fantasy got delayed again to december 9th again so 
Uh, hopefully it comes out, you know. Um, Near Automata releases in Japan on February 2nd of 2017. What is that again? Uh, it... I really don't know. I've only seen screenshots of it. I haven't looked into it too much. I hear about it a lot, but I don't like. I don't go look at it. I'd have to go look up a trailer to let you know. Um, Nero, you remember Nero? How I talked about Nero? Have you ever sure. talked about it? It's like a very Dark Souls like. It's kind of if Dark Souls and Dynasty Warriors had a baby had together. A love child. That's kind of what it's like. It's like a samurai. He's a samurai fighting oni and shit like that. Um. And it's not as hard anymore. They lightened it up, but that's being released in February now too. So, and that's a PS4 exclusive, I believe. Um, then we have the PS4 Pro games. Uh, when you go to your retailers, it will have a little sticker on it to let you know which games are compatible with PS4 Pro. I guess that's a good thing cosmetically. I like this. I like that. Yeah. Uh but you know, I feel if you bought a PS4 Pro, you're going to know which games are going to support it because that's targeted specifically for people that care about, you know, high-resolution graphics. So, uh, I'm hoping that the PS4 Pro will not lead to games that can only be supported by PS4 Pro. I am hoping. Honestly, I'd rather... I don't if, think it will. If it still. were a thing where it was like, well, the PS4 Pro can graphically improve and besides graphically improve but like give us more scope give us better games on it outside of just we up the graphics i'd probably be okay with that in like a year and a half or two you know what i mean yeah because then you do it in a year and a half or two and then you come out with the ps5 or whatever or the uh, upgrade to the ps4 you know what i mean whatever the next system's called because microsoft's already like fuck it we're going full train ahead we're just gonna release a system that's exponentially more powerful than our current one. So, hopefully, we'll see. Uh, this one I found to be interesting. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which came out almost a year ago now, um, could be getting another season pass. Now, this is from a survey from Ubisoft that uh, had asked if somebody would, uh, you know, if customers would be interested in future seasons. Um, so. I mean, I don't play Siege. I know people that play Siege. The people that play Siege love Siege. Yeah, like, Siege is good. I have It's a good Siege. game. I'm terrible at it, so I don't play it. But it's a good game. Um, and I, I hate season passes, but they're here, and people keep buying them, so we're going to keep getting them. So I'd rather just be like, well, here... it like I would rather have a Destiny kind of thing, where it's like, here's a shitload of stuff all at once. You know what I mean? Like an Destiny expansion. made me so mad that you buy the season pass, but Taken King was year two. Yeah, well, that's how this all the be. content for year one. I was like, I know, but it just made me so mad because the uh, I feel your struggle because uh, Dark Below and House of Wolves were so tiny. Yeah, they were very minuscule in comparison to the Taken King. Yeah. The Taken King and felt like a quarter of what the original Destiny game was in terms of content. So, it was huge. Yeah, it was pretty big update i don't think it was worth so. 40 dollars but you know that's just me um moving on ps4 update 4.0 is live um so i mean you probably have it downloaded by now uh the playstation blog has a full list of updates if you're interested in checking them out besides just running through the system software yourself there's a few aesthetic changes mainly the quick menu i like the new quick menu i also like the quick menu it's a lot faster now too which i appreciate um, yeah. more Sony news uh, this is unfortunate news Sony San Diego studio has laid off employees in their London studios um, I don't remember the numbers I don't think I even saw numbers I know it was um, well I mean jobs are jobs people lost their jobs basically um, and somebody made a good point that Sony San Diego the, these off branch studios are all making free to play games um and free to play games as we know only survive off microtransactions. So yeah, you know clearly, this you know when I, it says something about that business model of people are losing their jobs, and that's shitty to say. But you know, good news is though, hopefully they can find something. 
I feel like I feel like working in video games. I feel like finding a new job is not going to be that hard. No, I feel like um, especially if you're the kind of person that uh, gets to go to conferences and stuff like that and move along, you know, and get to go meet people and stuff like that. I feel like it's a lot easier for you because then you can just call up on your, you know somebody you know and be like, hey, I lost my job, you know, like do you know anybody? And they can get you to any, you know what I mean? Exactly. And you out. So it's either really tight I'm, I'm assuming it's really tight knit when it comes to developers especially with love and hate relationships it basically if you're a dickhead i assume they're not going to help you with shit so um and and the majority of it too is you know like they weren't firing them for being bad employees yeah. they were firing them they couldn't afford to keep them on which means yeah. most likely they'll they're going to write them a glowing recommendation to yeah. uh or just like a if you needed like if you were if they did want like references or whatever like yeah. i'm sure you're only gonna get good things from uh getting laid off laying off is such bullshit like i hate when they do that it's such bullshit just fire them just fire them because you know when you get laid off you're never getting called back most likely if you get called back it's like a year or two later and it's like at people, this point i already have another job but people expect to but that's just it. If you're talking about what the term actually means of being laid off, like, like we'll invite you back if you lose your job, people consider it being fired. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, people consider it being fired. It, and it is and it is bad. It, it's, it's really crappy, but unfortunately, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. No. So, no, well, they're, good they're, luck to them. You're a business at the end of the day. And business is harsh and cruel. Maybe. Maybe if you keep all those employees, you won't be able to release a game. Maybe your studio will close and everyone will lose their job. Sure. So. We'll see. You know. Or you'll I mean, get absorbed by Activision and they'll chain <laughs> you up in a basement and make you work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to shovel the coal. Activision will go, no. We need more DLC. <laughs> get back to work. Uh, I read something, but while we're talking about Activision, um... I just read a headline, and I don't know who said this, so I'm not going to even attempt to say a, a quote on anybody, but it, the headline was, Activision says there will always be a Call of Duty. And I'm like, for the love of fuck, give it a break maybe once a year. Like, maybe just one year, give it a break. Just one? Just one. In the last, like, ten years. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. That's the Black I get Ops, it. I still think Black, I still think Black Ops 1 is one of the best Call of Duties I've ever played. Black Ops 1 is really good. People Black Ops 1 when it so came fun. out, everybody fucking hated it. Like, generally, the, the Call of Duty community fucking hated that game. And they didn't like Black Ops 2 either. And I'm like, I kind of like Black I Ops. I like it. Black Ops like is good. It. So, but, um, anyways, moving on from that, um, we're going to talk about Bungie for a second. So, Bungie. I find this to be really weird i'll go through the whole thing and then i'll say what i gotta say so um bungie one of the developers of bungie was recently interviewed and they were asked you know uh are you guys gonna do ps4 pro update you know are you gonna update to support 4k and they said um rise of irons will not get rise of iron will not get a ps4 pro update but they will be looking at it for future upgrades so it's consideration which um, basically means that Rise of Iron won't have it, and most likely the DLC after Rise of Iron will probably not have it. Honestly, I think that comes down to Activision. Because Activision's making Ooh. all of their studios do the PS4 Pro update. Um, the COD 4 remaster's getting it, Infinite Warfare is getting it, Black Ops 3 is getting it. So, hmm. I, I feel like somebody at Activision's going to be like, no, we have a deal with Sony. You have to make the update. Like, but you have to make the update. This contract you signed says so. We own your soul. We own you. We own, we, we own your, your soul. Your mouth. We own your ears. We own your assholes. Okay. Do it. That's anyways, enough. Um, Thank you. Uh, anyways, I do find it weird that Bungie and Activision have, have had a really tight-knit relationship this generation, and they're kind of like, eh. You know what I mean? Like, I find it kind of weird. Like, Sony helped try to push your game, and your game helped push PS4s. You know what I mean? So Exactly. You would think you would want to help them out, but, you know, that's a lot of work to up that entire game, and that engine already is a pain in the ass to work with, so... They had to make their own. They should have just gone with another engine. 
They, to be fair, they're working with Activision 2 on the game. Activision could have just loaned them one of the engines they have. <laughs> just be like, here, use this one. You know? Um, and the last Any of you heavy YouTube fans, you might notice Good Mythical Morning is playing in the background. Nice. Thought, thought I should point that out. Nice. Um, last piece of news. Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to read the whole goddamn name because I don't know what it is. Uh, th- it is being released... January 24, 17. So, finally. Now, granted, I've, I, to be fair, I think they deserve a little bit of leeway with this one because of the fact that they're porting a 3DS game over to system. Exactly. Like, that's not easy. Plus, they're up it to 1080, I think. So, like, they have a lot of shit they have to do to that game. Like, it's not like they can just go, boop, it works now. You know what I mean? So... Give them credit where credit is due. Um, the trailer looks fucking awesome. The graphics look amazing. Then again, it's Square Enix. Square Enix has some of the best graphics around. Um, did you recently see the uh, the Final Fantasy fifteen movie? No, I did not. If you haven't seen the Final Fantasy fifteen movie, don't you don't have to watch the whole thing necessarily, but go watch a clip of it and see how Square Enix just shits on everyone when it comes to CGI. I walked because uh, I was over at a buddy's house and his sister was watching it. And I was like, this looks really fucking good for CG. And at one point, they're driving in a car. And I'm like, did they like replace real? Because it was an action scene. So I was like, clearly, this is CG. And then later on, it was a calmer scene where they were just driving down the street. I'm like, are these real people? She's like, no, still CGI. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, Square Enix is ridiculous with their CGI. So give them props where props is due. So, but that is it for the week. Don't forget, do not forget that um, with Kingdom Hearts 2.8, you will be getting Aqua's side story. And a new cinematic. And a new cinematic. For what, the Keyblade War? It's a prequel to the Keyblade War, yes. Uh, It's supposed to talk about how the Keyblade War started and all that, and then I guess show some of it. So, Unchained, the mobile game, is also a prequel to the Keyblade War. But it's like, I don't know, it's weird the way Unchained is. Like, they kind of fucked it up even more by putting Unchained out. Like, so. Yeah. Did you play Unchained, the mobile game? I have played Unchained. Yeah, it kind of fucked up this. Why? Why do you keep doing this? (laughs) Just make a story arc. Stop making a story fucking stock graph. It's fucked up. I don't know. Anyways, I'm done. Believe it or not, one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts games was Dream Drop Distance, even though I never finished it. Dream Drop um, Distance is a fucking really good game. It felt like it... Some games, you we worry how they're going to be on handheld. And, yeah. no, like, it's... even on even on current generation, you would expect, you know, a Kingdom Hearts game on a, on, a, on the 3DS. To be sure. That doesn't sound too good. But it was actually really good. Yeah. The gameplay was solid. Yeah, the gameplay is really and good. And slow motion. And slow motion is great. Um... Because they finally be solved, they finally solved that one issue that we had in Kingdom Hearts is when you're walking anywhere, how you're just da, 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 da. yeah, load Floor screen, motion. Da, 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 da. load screen, slow <laughs> like, motion oh, definitely helps out, and you can get yourself moving really fast. Yeah, you can, and it works with combat system, so it's not just like oh, it's a faster way to traverse. So, but. That's it. If you if you if you have a 3DS and you like Kingdom Hearts, do it. Pick that game up. That's a really fun game, and it will keep you preoccupied because it is hard. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't it have a 3DS, hard. pick it up on PS4. When if you have a PS4, yeah. All so. right, but anyway, try and check us out at least once a week. We try and do this at least that often. Um, other videos pop up every now and then, either me playing a game or someone doing an unboxing or Mike talking about his problems. Any? <laughs> I never any... publicly post videos about my problems. Hey, you never this know. It's not true. I could, t- I could tell you about my experience at the Microsoft Store. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know if you want me to talk about my awful experience at the Microsoft <laughs> Store. Because it was, I got, they asked me to leave. They did. They asked me to leave because I was making a scene. <laughs> Do I look like someone who would make a scene? And for you SoundCloud listeners, do I sound like someone who would make a scene? No, not really. Answer carefully. Okay. All right. 
We're going to get out of here. Um, I'm Ambassador Chris. And I'm Ambassador Michael. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.